Examples. There can be sentences. There are lots of ways of exemplifying a structure. Sentences are economical, and they can give a very clear illustration of how a structure is used. Uh, they do need to be realistic. Um, there has been an extreme view that all examples we give to students should be taken from a corpus. Uh, I think generally that's counterproductive. Examples in a corpus often have a lot of nuisance vocabulary in, they're out of context. Um, I'm much happier, not with real life examples, but necessarily, but with realistic examples that are the kind of thing that we actually say. But okay, um, sentences are a good way of exemplifying structures. It's nice if they're realistic. What are other ways? Texts. It's obvious what that's for. A couple of texts, one about somebody who's alive, one about somebody who was living in the 19th century. Different tenses. Students don't have to do any work with those. You don't always have to have comprehension questions. Um, people use those much too much, I think. But uh, a neat way of illustrating the difference between simple past and present perfect. Um, I found myself, when I was putting these books together, found myself looking for grammar out in the street a whole lot. Um, there's a lot of grammar around in the street. Um, I used to go out with my camera and butterfly net looking for different bits of grammar out in the wild. And one day I was out hunting determiners. All, both, any, every, etc. That lot of words. And what I hoped, I didn't think I would find it, I really wanted something that would show the difference between all day and every day. Problematic for some students. Well, there I was driving into Oxford and I was stopped at the red light at the bottom of St. Aldate's. And I looked idly out of the car window. And there, on the wall of the pub opposite, was good food served here all day, every day. Uh, thank you, God. And I wound down the window, took several photographs, took off the lens cap, took several more photographs. By this time, the light had long since turned green, and the people behind me were behaving in a decidedly un-English way. But I got my photos. They're not very well reproduced, are my determiner photos from that particular trip. Um, two other areas where you can get good examples of how structures are used are cartoon captions or the things that get said in speech bubbles in cartoons, the words that come in cartoons, and quotations. Uh, they're short and memorable, they stick in the mind, so quite effective for student learning. Here is my all-time favorite quotation. Um, you know those verbs that are not supposed to have progressive continuous forms, except when they do, <laughs> like I'm loving it. Mm understand and so on um, but mostly they don't here is a quote that's full of perfectly normal uses of those verbs it's from an American State Department spokesman it goes like this I know that you believe that you understood what you think I said but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is not what I meant <laughs> I know that you believe that you understood what you think I said but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is not what I meant isn't that nice some students like little bits of literature, little bits of prose or poetry texts. Um, for those, embedding a structure um, in one of those can help to have it stick in the mind. Here's a poem. Um, simple past negative. Not very exciting in itself. I didn't do the housework. I didn't feed the goldfish. I didn't make the bed. I didn't study algebra. I watched a film instead. I didn't practice on the flute. I didn't write to Jean. I didn't visit Auntie May. I read a magazine. I didn't do the housework. I started. Then I quit. 
and wrote a poem just to say, I love you. This is it. That's not very grey, is it?